Our Father John, of the Father, said, Of love be more careful than of pain. And that's really what this morning's homily is about. My wife was telling me last night that a friend of hers, uh, who was married to a Mormon, told her about an incident that happened the other night in the Mormon church, but the whole family goes to classes. And the dad, at a certain point in the evening, heads to that room, mom heads to that room, and the children go to their group age. And there was this little three-year-old. And when it came time to divide and go to your separate places, this was the first time. Nobody explained to the three-year-old anything. And the three-year-old uh, cried because he wanted to go with his mom and dad. And the teacher said, oh, no, don't cry. We're here to love Jesus. And he said, I don't love Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course he doesn't. Jesus is taking my mom and dad away. You think like a three-year-old, don't you? <laughs> That's just. So, I think about how that might be a hurdle someday for that boy to love Jesus. An old monk on YouTube from Romania was talking about his life in the mountains. And the person talking to him said, what? Does the monk have to do or not do? Well, he said, we have to be loved. For example, he said, we are not permitted to, to discipline a child because we might hurt them, and that will offend God. When I was little, my mother wrote in my, my baby book, everything. And she wrote in there that when I was two, I wouldn't go to sleep until my dad came home. And to tuck me in and hug me and then I would go to sleep. Otherwise, I'd just lay there and make noises and keep my breath and everything. And I would not go to sleep until I came home. Then, I noticed when I was about five or six, my dad was distant. My mother caught him once, I guess, spanking me, or trying to spank me, and she forbid him. And from that point on, he kind of backed away from me. My mom took care of me. And then, when I was seven, we lived in Richmond, California. During the war, my dad worked in the shipyards. And um, we found, outside of our house, there was a construction going on. And I found a little wire brand. You know what a brand is? A little tiny, tiny little nail. And I didn't have a hammer. And I'd seen my dad hammer nails into wood. There was no wood. So, but there was a whole board there with a tire on it. And I figured I'd press it into that. So I went over and I pressed it into the tread. It never went into the tire. And my dad came out of the house and saw me do that. And he nearly jerked my arm out of the socket and pulled me into the construction shed where my mother couldn't see me. And he pulled my pants down and put me over his knees. And he literally beat my butt. I mean, he beat it. He didn't spank me. He beat me. And inside of me, I can remember it like it happened yesterday. Inside of me, something broke. How can he love me and do this? I could not comprehend it. It, it, it broke. Love was broken. It would never repair. Even when he was in his 80s and I, I went to see him. And I tried to talk about, uh, uh, Dad, I love you. you know, and uh, Are you going to go see uh, my sister? All those things. No communication at all. Just nothing. Just like talking to him over the wall. There was nothing there. Of course, I love him over here. But 
Allah be more careful than of anything, our Father John said. The conversation that never happened, never happened. God the Father is talking with his son. I am so offended by my stupid renegade children. I am so offended. I do everything for them. They don't care. I, I just, I'm done with them. If I kill them all, I'm rid of the problem. But I'm not going to feel better, and I'll have nobody to be God for. So, son, I'm going to throw you under the bus. <laughs> I love you, but I'm going to throw you under the bus so I'll feel better. My justice will be satisfying. When I see your blood splattered all over the street, I will feel the price that has been paid for the indignities heaped on me. That's called juridical Catholicism. It came from Roman law, which doesn't end. In the beginning of the uh, church after Constantine. And in the West, we build canon law on the foundation and skeleton of civil Roman law, which is unbending. You have to pay the price. There can't just can't just walk away. So that affected all of our theology. So we have this God who one minute kisses us, but the next minute, because we make a mistake, has to take it out of us. Thank God that conversation never happened. But it does happen in the minds of Catholics. Well, justice, justice, justice. I love Therese because she didn't like justice. She would have nothing to do with it. Oh. All of your sins are like mist thrown in a furnace of God's love. Nobody could understand it, but they all liked to hear it. They loved to hear her say that. She became the most popular saint in all of years and years and years, decades. Why? Because she trusted the love of God. And she didn't have anything to do with his justice. In the convent, the nuns that wrote these wonderful, I dedicate my soul to divine justice as a victim, beat me up instead of some poor sinner. Beat me up. They wear crosses with nails and all the rest of it to go into their flesh. What kind of God would like that? Certainly not the God of love. Love and vengeance, love and punishment, don't flow in the same channel. They cannot. They're diametrically opposed. Mercy. Mercy does flow. But not justice. We would have no chance with divine justice if it were perfect. He just doesn't use it. Today, we celebrate Immaculate Heart of Mary. And we're going to be laying our sins on the head of the Lamb in the Mass. Everything I've ever done in my whole life, I can lay that on, on his head. That host that's up on the altar, that's the Lamb. God didn't provide him to satisfy his justice. I will never, ever, ever accept that. Love wouldn't do that. He provided the Lamb out of love because we had no other offer. Pure love. One day I was talking with a very Jewish priest, and I, I said, how can you be so juridical? How can you think that God, that a parent would understand when four of their children are in heaven and one's in hell, and they're going to have a happy heaven? Oh, he said, it's easy. It's easy. All you have to do is realize that God will explain his justice to them. And they'll understand it so well, they will agree with him and never think of their child again. And I looked at him and I said, you don't have any children. You have no idea what you're saying. 
that you could explain that to somebody? How can you explain the death of love? With justice, you can't do it. Love is love, and it lasts forever. Love never ends. You have to reconcile this justice-love issue in your mind to really understand how much God wants us. You will never understand that otherwise. What about Mary? She's not allowed to, to be just. She is not allowed to judge anybody. She's forbidden, just as you are. There's only one judge, and it's not her. So no matter how bad you are when you come to her, she's not going to be just. She's going to love you. And do whatever love requires in that moment. Justice is another issue that waits for, for God. And what does she give you? In the flesh of her son, in the Eucharist, she gives you her, a part of herself. All of this flesh comes from her, doesn't it? So, how can you give more than yourself? And that's what she does. So if when you think about praying to her, if you had a bad experience with a parent or women in your life, that can color back your confidence in her. But I'm telling you, she doesn't judge. And she gives you something of herself in the flesh of her son. Wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. Thank God we have her to soften the harshness of the Old Testament. Let us pray.